Hello everyone, I hope that you are having a good day today. I thought I would do Wednesday's video on work, something that I've actually brought up quite a few times in my videos, but really I haven't done a study about it and seeing what the Bible says about working and how God feels about it and, and, and just in general what it says. So I will get right into it. So um, first of all, God created men and women in his own image and God worked for six days and rested on the seventh day, the Sabbath, and he made people in his image. So he, if he is working, and the Bible actually says he's working all the time on our behalf, and then that shows that he wants us to be working. Not all the time he knows we need rest, but he wants us to be creative and work as well, okay, to have purpose in our work. And then it says, even the very first chapter of the Bible in Genesis uh, 1, on, uh, 1, 27, 28, and through 215, it talks about, you know, people working. But it says, the Lord God placed the man in the Garden of Eden to tend to it and care for it, okay? So that was Adam's original job was actually to pretty much, you know, be a gardener and to tend after that beautiful garden, okay? And then in Proverbs, which Proverbs has a lot to say about work. I highly encourage people to read the book of Proverbs. It's a wonderful book. It says, hard work means prosperity. Only fools idle away their time. Work hard and become a leader. Be lazy and become a slave. Lazy people don't even cook their game they catch, but the diligent make use of everything they find. And that's Proverbs 12, verse 11, 24, and 27, okay? So basically, if you are working hard, you are going to have money. Like it says, prosperity. Fools idle away their time. If you work hard, your boss and people will see that. And a lot of times you move up in the company, just like it says, becomes a leader. But lazy people become slaves. And how do they become slaves? They become slaves to a system of, you know, handouts. And so you really are indebted and become um, beholden to someone uh, even if it is the government. And I know that some people need to be on you know, government assistance because they absolutely cannot work. They're sick. They have a terrible disability. They may be a single mother with children who needs help with child care. So I am not downing that at all. But if you are absolutely able to work and you are not, and you're just beholden upon a system to provide for you continually, you know, um, this is not a plan to ever get off of it. You actually are a slave to that system, okay? And then it says um, in Proverbs 14, 4 and 23, an empty stable stays clean, but no income comes from an empty stable. Work brings profit, but mere talk leads to prosperity, to poverty. And so people can talk a good game, but real work is actually what's going to bring prosperity and talk is going to bring poverty. And then it says good planning and hard work lead to prosperity, but hasty shortcuts lead to poverty. So it always has a contrast in Proverbs because hard work and good planning, when you're really planning out a business or a job, leads to prosperity, but hastiness, no plans, shortcuts lead to poverty because you're not doing a good job. It's not a good plan. You may waste money, okay? And then again, it says Proverbs 28 through 19, hard workers have plenty of food and playing around brings poverty, okay? There again, the same contrast, lazy people leading to poverty, okay? And then in, um, it says in the New Testament, it says 1 Thessalonians 4, 11 through 12, this should be your ambition to live a quiet life, minding your own business and working with your own hands, just as we commanded you before. As a result, people who are not Christians will respect the way you live and you will not need to depend on others to meet your financial needs. 
There is nothing worse than having to depend on others to meet your financial needs. You're actually a slave to them, okay? And then it says in 1 Timothy 5.8, those who won't care for their own relatives, especially those living in the same household, have denied what we believe, Christianity. Such people are worse than unbelievers. So what that's talking about is a parent who absolutely refuses to work and does not provide for their own relatives or children, wife, whatever, you are considered worse than an unbeliever because God has called um, us to be parents, to be providers of the children, okay? And then it says um, another good one is um, Ephesians 4.28. If you are a thief, stop stealing. Begin to use your hands for honest work and then give generously to others in need. And that really is what God has called us to do is to work. And we use that work and the money that we have to provide for our family and our needs, but to give back to God in tithe, which helps other people. Okay. And then it says um, in Ephesians 6, 6 through 7, work hard. But not just to please your masters when they are watching, and that would be like your boss. As slaves of Christ, do the will of God with all of your heart. Work with enthusiasm as though you were working for the Lord rather than for people. So this is about the motive of working and how people work at their jobs or at home. Okay, and this can also be for a woman who is not working in the home that they're watching their kids. It's working unto the Lord and not to men, and then you will get your reward. And that means working heartily at what you're doing, doing your best at what you're doing. Um, you know, putting sincerity into your work, whether that's out of the home or in the home, okay? Doing a good quality job. And then it says in 1 Corinthians 10, 31, whatever you eat or drink or whatever you do, which would include work, you must do all for the glory of God. That would be being a good worker, not stealing from your employer, not shifting, uh, you know, shafting the employer in work time. So having integrity in your work. And then it says, Romans 12, 11, never be lazy in your work, but serve the Lord enthusiastically. So remembering that you're serving the Lord, he's watching. And if we work with all of our heart, we tend to succeed and we get promoted, okay? And then it says in Leviticus 19, 13, the Old Testament, do not cheat or rob anyone. Always pay your hired workers promptly. And this is for... You know, if we would hire someone at our home, if we are business owners, you know, to pay the people on time, not to withhold their money. I've had my kids work for business owners and they've tried to do this. And, you know, that is an unbiblical thing to do. And they, and they were adults or teens when this happened. And then here's another one in Deuteronomy about treating workers. In Deuteronomy 24, 14 through 15, Never take advantage of poor laborers, whether fellow Israelites or foreigners living in your towns. Pay them their wages each day before sunset because they are poor and are counting on it. Otherwise, they might cry out against, out to the Lord against you and it would be counted against you as a sin because God wants us to be, um, you know, uh, you know, faithful in our finances and our money, not cheating people and paying our laborers, and we will be held accountable to him. And then lastly, since we're on the nine minute mark, I'm going to read a little bit longer um, ver a verse in 2 Thessalonians 3, 6 through 12. It says, now, dear brothers and sisters, we give you this command with the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ. Stay away from any Christian who lives in idleness and doesn't follow the tradition of hard work that we gave you, okay? So stay away from them. For you know that you ought to follow our example. We were never lazy when we were with you. We never accepted food from anyone without paying for it. We worked hard day and night so that we would not be a burden to any of you. It wasn't that we didn't have the right to ask you to feed us. They were missionaries. But we wanted to give you an example to follow. 
Even while we were with you, we gave you this rule, and this is a wonderful rule. Whoever does not work should not eat. Yet we hear that some of you are living idle lives, refusing to work and wasting time meddling in other people's business. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we appeal to such people. No, we command them, settle down and get to work and earn your own living. That was 2 Thessalonians 3, 6 through 12. And that's the last scripture I'm going to read. So we can see that the Lord is very firm all the way from the Old Testament to the New Testament about not being lazy and working. Now, obviously, this is not, I'm not talking about that people who are in disability, you know, who can't work. Now, even people on disability, there's different levels of disability. And if you're at home, you can take care of your home if you're able to. You know, you can take care of your space. Um, you know, if you're a stay-at-home mom, you can do well in taking care of your children and your household. So it's really thinking about our work as glorifying God in whatever we do and doing the best that we can, being diligent with the resources that God has given us, the blessings, the natural talents, the natural gifts that he's given us, and also the spiritual gifts. If we work in a church and volunteer our time or in a ministry, we need to do the best that we can do and being absolutely honest and transparent in everything that we do so that is what the lord thinks about work and i just wanted to do a study on it i hope that you have a great day and i will see you tomorrow